Yes. If you know. And that is because I'm not too tall, so I'm adding to my height. That's, <laughs> That's 40th birthday shout. If you know you are grateful that our pastor, our father, our papa is 60 years looking healthy, not just looking healthy, very healthy, doing God's work, I want you to scream, Happy birthday! You know, every time I come here, most times is to do comedy, but um, Saturday is very different. Um, I was a student in Enugu, and then I walked into House on the Rock, and I was like, ah, this church is different from the other churches here. They even gave first time as food. So, ah, the choir was different. I was like, who is the founder of this church? They say it's in Lagos. I see where is he? I said I must see him. Another very first time I saw Pastor Paul was on a video that he recorded for the Millennium Temple. Those of you who repented the last 10 years, you don't know what that video is. <laughs> As I saw that video, I said, yes, that is my pastor. So when I came to Lagos in 2012, July 26th, I said, House on the Rock is fast. And where I saw House was at Lagos border, Ikorodu. Then as the was at Muson Center, ah, I joined one church. The pastor preached. Ah, I said, no. Even me, when I was campus assistant pastor, I was doing better than that. So I can't. I said, I cannot come to Lagos and be, I'll be feeding who's supposed to feed me. So I said, I'm going to see Pastor Paul. So I said, let me try one Sunday. That's how I entered bus from a Greek, 7 a.m. I got to Muson, third service. Ah, but I made up no matter how far it, the journey was, the distance, I must come to Muson every Sunday. And I told God, I said, God, I want to be going to church early, so be moving my address closer to church. <laughs> That's how God answered, move my address from Kurudu to Bariga. But then, so I saw the someone said, hey, and so it was a miracle, but the environment, I always, where, say, where do you live? I say, Akoka, because I didn't like <laughs> That I was in Bariga. My friend said, you live in Bariga? I said, I cannot live in Bariga. Bariga is around me. It's, I'm not there. And in this house, every Sunday, Pastor Bob would speak the word of God to us. There was one Sunday I was going through stuff. I was just sitting. I always sit at that gallery because, uh, because I'm not very tall. So I like to sit at that place so that I can look at you directly. And Pastor Bob was preaching about Peter walking on water. And he made a prophetic statement, said, God will never allow you to sink. It was as if that word came to me directly, and I held it. From that day to this very moment, every time I'm going through stuff, and you know there are those times where you are so overwhelmed, you cannot even pray. I say, God, remember what Pastor Paul said. He said, you will not allow me to sink. <laughs> and every single time, I never sink. And I'm going to look at Pastor Paul. See, we don't, I personally feel that they should have given 25th January public day for you, sir. <laughs> no, because if you check it well, the impact Pastor Paul has, sorry, I'm, I, I should, I, I'm sorry, sir. The impact my father has over this country should be, should be a national holiday. <laughs> it's the truth. So I went somewhere, and the one pastor, I won't mention his name, he was angry with you. I said, why are you angry with Pastor Paul? He said, can Pastor Paul organize the experience and does not take offerings? <laughs> I'm quoting him, sir. No, I'm quoting him. And he said that Pastor Paul is, is depriving people from the opportunity to sow into the experience. So he said by himself, he came to church office after this. He's not a member of this church, and dropped his seed. And I told him, I said, my father does not do what God has not told him to do. I believe, you know, when Pastor started the communion, when he was teaching about communion, you know, every communion said testimonies from the previous communion. All the testimonies are always new. There was one particular communion service. Pastor repeated a previous testimony. Now, ah, I was sitting there. I was not like, ah, I don't do anything new this month. 
So when Pastor Bob was done reading it, he now prayed. Because the testimony was about somebody that had, was a lady that had a form of discomfort on her chest for years. And Pastor Bob prophesied that somebody is going through that same thing and the person received a healing. Instantly, a lady sitting around that place came out. And I said, oh, now I understand why Pastor Bob read an old testimony to enable him to prophesy to that person to receive a healing. So I want to say thank you very much for, for the words you've spoken to us. Recently, Pastor Paul made a statement. He said, for you to know God. No, I, I don't want to make a mistake. I wrote it on my phone. Yeah. It's on this. He said, for you to know God. No, 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 no. No, no. Ma, you know, this phone is where, you know, iPhone, the battery can die quick. So, so. Uh -huh. Everything Pastor Paul says, I write it down. He said, for to know God correctly, you have to know God continually. And when Pastor Paul said that, you know, sir, thank you for correctly preaching the message of grace. Because as much as I'm a young guy, I'm angry with the way these new pastors are preaching. Because I've been in Campus Fellowship Pastor, I know what the, most of them are doing. They are manipulating people. Giving people life so that they want their church to be f filled up. They just say, uh, grace is this, grace is that. But if you listen to Pastor Paul very well, he has correctly preached the message of grace to, for us to know that it's not a license to sin. <laughs> you know, somebody of his status and the people around him, most times he might be under pressure to, to compromise his stand. But he, even though Pastor Paul does not, Pastor Paul fears no one, he, he does not fear anyone. And so we thank you very much for staying true. I'm grateful that I'm a son of God. And I'm a, I was encouraged with that video. When we were showing the video, they now showed Felandro to you when he was young. <laughs> no, you know what I'm encouraged? When they showed that particular clip, the voiceover at that point said, they said House on the Rock was the church of the youth. And now that was the youth of House on the Rock then. And now we are the new youth. We will make you proud, sir. Daddy, we are going to make you proud. Happy birthday. Thank you for this platform. We all know you, sir. Thank you very much. If you love possible, one more time. Come on, make some noise. Happy birthday, sir. All right, we're going to welcome some testimonies. Come on, put your hands together. Bless God for what he's doing here in our lives.